It's 7 p.m. India time. You're watching World is One News. I'm Krishna Kumar and Russian President Vladimir Putin has landed in India's capital, New Delhi. These are live visuals uh, coming to you straight uh, from uh, the Palam Airport in New Delhi where Russia's President Vladimir Putin has arrived for the India-Russia bilateral summit that's set to take place. It's a chock a block schedule for Vladimir uh, Putin from the moment he lands uh, because uh, this is a less than 24 hour visit uh, because uh, tomorrow by 5.40 p.m. he will be heading back to Moscow. But in the meanwhile, a lot is going to be in the works including the much talked about S-400 air defense system purchased by India from Russia. But for now, ladies and gentlemen, visuals on your screens of uh, Russian President Vladimir Putin's aircraft landing at the Palam Airport in New Delhi. We have uh, former Indian High Commissioner Mr. G. Pat Sardi continuing to stay with us here on Vyond. Mr. Pat Sardi, from the moment those doors open and Vladimir Putin comes out, a lot of uh, analysis uh, will be placed upon the body language that somebody like Vladimir Putin carries and the kind of bonhomie that uh, he will be sharing with uh, India's Prime Minister Narendra Modi. As a professional diplomat, I discount the so-called body language. They have known each other, met each other several times. And they are both very shrewd politicians and they must have sized each other up. Yeah. So yes, the bonhomie will be there. But the relationship is going to be dis dis uh, sort of decided by objective realities and what transpires. Uh, of course, I'm mm. not denying that at all. But, I, but uh, when, when two larger than life personalities like Vladimir Putin mm. and Narendra Modi meet. Mm. Now, these are larger than life personalities. We've seen a short while ago on Vion only, uh, Vladimir Putin singing, uh, you know, and he's dancing and he's, you know, rides the bear back on a horse. So, you know, it's, that's the kind of personality that he's projected. So that's the reason why I was asking you about his body language. But then again, I'm asking you that at the same time, knowing that if there's anybody who's watching this closely, it's the United States of America, because the S-400 air defense uh, missile system mm -hmm. purchased by India from Russia uh, and the possible sanctions that it could attract from the U.S. And more importantly, U.S. will be watching to see how India is going ahead with it. You know, because India, at the end of the day, is going to go ahead with the S-400 purchase, isn't mm -hmm. it? Of course, because look, the S-400 is meant to defend our cities and populations against a possible the possibility, not the probability, of attacks either by Pakistan or China. The Americans do not have the equivalent of the S-400. That is the reality and I think that irks them more than this. So uh, we are not going to back off on that. And my hunch is we will find a way around it. Yes, everybody will make their uh, pro forma noises. Mr. Uh, President Trump will say one thing to Fox News <laughs> and another thing to us. So uh, th these are uh, dramatics which will happen. But uh, one important point you must remember about our foreign policy, which is a national consensus. We have succeeded over the years in having, especially in the last 20 years, in having equally good relations with the Americans and the Russians. We have not allowed them to clash with each other. Mm. The other point you have to bear in mind this American legislation is more about threatening people to buy American arms and keep the American arms market going. I'm sure we'll find ways to oblige them <laughs> because they, they do have a lot of good weapons to, to supply. That's right. And as far as the Russians are concerned, much of the future deals we are going in with them, whether it is for uh, submarines and frigates or rifles, all these, uh, the AK-103 rifles, these are all for made in India. Yes. So this is not something we are acquiring. Right. And lastly, I think we are smart, uh, smart enough to have the banking and other arrangements in place to deal with it. That's a solid relationship that we have in, in fact uh, built absolutely. with Russia over the years, uh, you know, since the split of the Soviet Union. In fact, uh, because, you know, numbers say that uh, over 70 percentage of India's weaponry still mm. remains of either Soviet or Russian origin. Yes. That's the kind of defense ties that India and Russia share over the last five years. Still, despite India purchasing so much from Israel and the U.S., Russia contributes over 60 percentage of India's 
arms purchases in the last five years? Well, I think the uh, it's now being spread more even. But yes, the Russians have been reliable. We need their helicopters. The fact of the matter is, they are cost effective. Yep. They are good for our conditions and we are used to them. Minimal after-sales service required? Uh, they are, yes, they are pretty good. The MI-7, th uh, the MI-13 are still functioning. So I think um, uh, uh, the, uh, it's, it's good and uh, we, we will continue with it. Absolutely. And, and we have our differences with the Russians. But like we have our differences with the Americans. With any other country, absolutely. Yeah. Well put, uh, Mr. Mm -hmm. Patsadi, as we continue to get live uh, visuals of a grand state welcome that is being accorded to Russia's President Vladimir Putin with a red carpet on the tarmac uh, on the screen, ladies and gentlemen. Meanwhile, we have Mr. Fred Weir, Russian affairs expert, joining us from Moscow as well on this broadcast. Fred, thank you so much for being with us here on World is One News. Uh, a momentous occasion of... Uh, Russian President Vladimir Putin's visit to India, it's happened before, it's not the first time, but this comes with a great context. The US is watching this very closely. We're moments away from Russian President Vladimir Putin stepping out of the aircraft. Well, yes, um, it, it is, uh, I mean, it, it is an annual event, these summits. Uh, and this is the second meeting between Modi and Putin this year. Uh, so it's clear that uh, the relationship with India is is very high on the Russian agenda. It wasn't always, um, you know, it, it fell off during the 90s and, and during the Medvedev presidency. Um, and it, it's become much more strained uh, in the past few years, it's mainly because Russia is drifting closer and closer into the strategic embrace of China. Uh, but I think Putin and, and, and much of the Russian establishment want to restore links with India. Uh, they, they want to arrest this development of India uh, drifting into the, what they see as the American embrace. Uh, and, and maybe to get some of that strategic triangle buzz going again, you know, Moscow, Delhi, Beijing. Uh, it's an idea that still has some currency in Moscow. Uh, so, so uh, Putin is is uh, you know uh, making real efforts, I think, to to restore some of that Indian Russian mojo. Um, and I guess the Trump administration is is helping. Mm. Uh, they're, they're, I mean, I mean, this this uh, sanction spree that the Americans have gone on. Uh, tr sanctions and trade wars, uh, turning everything into a, a unilateral uh, deal with every single country that they used to have an under understandings with, tearing up the old understandings and trying to impose the American will through, uh, you know, blunt weapons like sanctions. Um, uh, I mean, it, I, I, I'm not sure if, if it will work mm. uh, or not. I mean, it's working with some countries. It right. clearly is. Well, yeah. Fred, stay with us. Uh, uh, Mr. Patsarthi, we're getting visuals of Russian President Vladimir Putin finally stepping out of the aircraft and he is going to be stepping on to the red carpet that's been rolled out for him on the tarmac. Uh, at this point in time, if you can quickly tell us, uh, what is the protocol like for a state visit like this? Well, it depends. He's, he's re he is received at the airport generally with uh, by the uh, by external affairs minister and the uh, uh, the usual protocol set up. And so is the but, case now. Like yeah, the, as, as it is. As Mr. Sushma over there as, welcoming as, Vladimir Putin. As, as it is being done now. So that that is normal protocol. Uh, I don't know. Uh, Mr. Modi makes interesting uh, sort of um, uh, exceptions. King of Jordan, for example. I wondered about it. And, you know, I then realized that the King of Jordan is a descendant of the Prophet Muhammad. <laughs> so there are calculations. In the case of Many of these visits, we believe in reciprocity. It depends on how it's done. But standard op operating procedure is it's the external affairs minister. And that's exactly what's happening. A quick chat between uh, uh, India's external affairs minister, Sushma Swaraj, and Vladimir Putin. Strong handshakes, a very warm welcome from India's external affairs minister to the Russian president who's uh, getting into his uh, vehicle and he will speed away as we speak from the tarmac Russian President Vladimir Putin has officially arrived and he's been given an, a very warm 
uh, official welcome. As per protocol, as uh, uh, former Indian High Commissioner Mr. G. Pasadhyay has been telling us, this is standard operating procedure, SOP, External Affairs Minister comes to the tarmac and on a red carpet we welcome the head of state of a foreign country and uh, all of it has been accorded to Mr. Putin. Yes, absolutely. And uh, would you, uh, now that uh, he has been given his welcome and he's in, his, uh, uh, in a vehicle, uh, what happens from here on? Because at the end of the day, this is, these are packed visits, it's a 23 hour visit to be, to be sure. You know, how did they make sure that everything is on time? It's, it, it, is, it must be a really difficult process to plan out We've, we've been on the business now for 70 years. <laughs> and you know, as, as a person used to joke, that what makes Indian diplomacy succeed is protocol and alcohol. So I think uh, protocol has been dealt with. I don't think Mr. Modi will serve alcohol in his dinner because Indian prime ministers uh, don't. But I'm sure Mr. Putin has other arrangements. Absolutely. And it's a huge, uh, uh, hugely important meeting uh, in the context of things, in the context of uh, international geopolitics. And, uh, you know, second time that Putin and uh, uh, Modi are meeting uh, for the year. Uh, so in that sense, uh, you know, as far as the conversation goes, they're, they're not, uh, you know, too far away from the last time they spoke. So it should flow much easier as compared to so many other countries. No, but I think it is important. Uh, we, we've had these regular bilateral summits. There is much now which uh, water has flown through the Ganga and the Volga. And uh, three basic areas we need to bear in mind. Space with our coming space flights and the Russians remember even in an era of sanctions after the nuclear tests the Russians alone continued space cooperation with us uh, and of course defense so uh, 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 space uh, defense and energy energy Russia is the largest supplier of nuclear power plants and what is interesting about Russian supplies is it is increasingly being indigenized their reactors, the bulk of the equipment now is coming out in India, uh, produced in That's India. right, almost half the deals that are un in under work, mm. under the works between India and Russia, half of it is about uh, you, you, the, the deal for four frigates, stealth frigates, two of which are going to be made in India. And then you have the assault rifles that are going to be made in India. So uh, Russia's partnership with India is a big push for the Make in India uh, project per se for India. Well, there is much we made in India, thanks to the Russians, which one can't discuss in public. But yes, it, the uh, Russian assistance to our security has been strong. We have differences with them, certainly on Afghanistan. Uh, we do have concerns about their uh, uh, involvement with the Taliban. Mm. Uh, but these are differences we can manage and resolve. Let me take this across to Fred Ware, if we still have with him. Fred Ware, uh, India does have its differences with Russia, especially on topics like Afghanistan. Do you think that that would come up in this bilateral summit? So because Afghanistan is increasingly an acute problem, um, and, and Russian ties with Pakistan have to be factored into that, um, everybody to be fair, in today's world, is diversifying their relationships. A lot of things that we took for granted in the past, we no longer can. Uh, and, and so uh, I think setting this on a new footing, uh, it subjects here all, all of us meet. Right. Fred, we're having a little bit of a connectivity issue with you. We will reconnect with you. Please stay with us. We'll just reconnect with you. Uh, Mr. Patsarthi, I want you to uh, come in and weigh in on what uh, Fred is uh, talking to us about uh, in terms of the differences between India and Russia and how, uh, you know, with this meeting, India is sort of uh, setting the stage for a new level or a new level of evolution. Because, uh, of the we, can, we can live with our differences with Russia and Afghanistan. We know that it is directed against the United States, not against us. Exactly. So th that's why I'm asking. So when this, India uh, is willing to openly defy the United States of America mm. and go ahead with an S-4 uh, missile defense system purchase, it, 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 it brings about a new era in, in, in India-Russia India ties, per se. Look, the Russians know over the years that we can be pretty firm with friends and our friends and foes alike uh, in the sense that we, there are certain issues on which we don't compromise. Uh, we will not set one country, allow one country to set the tone of our relations with Russia. Yes. So, um, uh, like, we wouldn't like the Russians to tell us what our relations with the United States should be. I'm sure they're not pleased with the extent of the military cooperation we have. But 
we do that according to our national interests. Mm. So I think what I, we call as strategic autonomy mm. is a crucial part. The other point I wish to make with regard to these sanctions, the Russians have a real serious problem. I mean the Americans, because the, the major purchases of weapons include three people who are crucial for them in their containment of China and in the uh, Indo-Pacific. Indonesia, Vietnam and India. Their, their policy will be reduced to zero because the Vietnamese are going to buy uh, Russian weapons. They've always done it and will continue to do so. And Indonesia has ordered SU-35 aircraft. So, for which they have sanctioned the Chinese. <laughs> so I think, uh, as our American friends sometimes point out, I think this legis CATSA legislation has created more problems than solved any. Uh, because in any case, in the case of India, we have found that where American weapons are technologically superior, one advantage is that we strike a direct deal with the Pentagon. It's, hmm. uh, it's a straight transaction. And um, the uh, Americans have been pretty, um, the equipment we've got has been pretty good yeah. and sophisticated. Yeah. So um, we'll go for the best wherever we get it. Right. And our diplomacy will have to ensure hmm. that we get it from all sources. And it's sort of India dehyphenating ties. Just the similar way uh, we've dehyphenated de uh, ties uh, uh, between uh, Palestine and uh, Israel, probably, if I can make that analogy. But, uh, Sabat Sadi, please stay with us. So, we also have uh, we on correspondent uh, Siddhant Sibbal, who has been tracking Russian President Vladimir Putin's visit to India's capital, New Delhi, all day. And he joins us live with the latest update. Uh, uh, Siddhant, uh, Mr. Putin has uh, been accorded a warm official welcome by India's External Affairs Minister Sushma Swaraj. Uh, talk to us what happens from here on. Well, uh, he has been accorded the welcome by India's External Affairs Minister and if boiled language has some, uh, uh, if I can interpret boiled language, then of course it's a, it's a good start to the visit. But now the Russian president goes to, uh, the, uh, the, uh, uh, to, to meet the, the Indian Prime Minister. This will be his first meeting with the Indian Prime Minister and tomorrow, of course, uh, the day starts with meeting with the Indian Prime Minister. Then, of course, bilateral level talks and restricted talks followed by press statements at the Hyderabad House. Then, of course, he will take part uh, at uh, an event a business event focus will be on business also because remember the business uh, uh, relationship between India and Russia, the trade price between India and Russia haven't been very robust so that will be the main focus uh, remember this is the second uh, meet uh, between the indian prime minister and the russian president uh, in this year first of course that famous informal summit in sochi that of course lasted for a few hours only uh, six to eight hours and now this uh, uh, two-day visit by the russian president uh, and of course the 19th annual uh, india russia uh, summit which is taking place big focus of course uh, is the s400 deal the big deal which of course as uh, as the former ambassador was discussing how that is causing some kind of uh, uh, unease in the relationship between Washington and New Delhi and India would like to have a waiver by the uh, President of the United States uh, because of the sanctions which will be imposed due to the CATSA law. But if we talk about connectivity, if we talk about uh, relationship uh, uh, relating to Iran, that will also be discussed because one connectivity plan is to connect Moscow with Mumbai through mm. Chabar. That is something that uh, will be impacted when the November uh, six sanctions come into effect, so that is something that will be discussed. Uh, but right. largely, this is a relationship based on defense ties because the, most of our defense equipments uh, are uh, uh, Soviet era. Uh, there, there's a legacy issue, and that is why uh, that is something India cannot change overnight. That will take time. But also, uh, when it comes to Americans, the trade tie, trade in defense is increasing. It's 15 billion dollars as of now. So India will be precariously balancing the relationship between Washington, right. uh, Moscow, and Beijing because we. We have seen an increasingly assertive Beijing and uh, there is an unpredictable administration in the United States of America. So India would like to have Moscow uh, close with us and uh, there has been a, 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 there has been a, a time-tested relationship with Moscow. So India can of course trust uh, Russia when it comes to defense ties. Siddhan Sabal, we are on correspondent uh, joining us with live updates uh, from uh, New Delhi. We have uh, former Indian High Commissioner Mr. G. Pathasarathy continuing to be with us here on this broadcast. Uh, I'm going to ask you one important thing, uh, uh, Mr. Pathasarathy. Whenever there's talk of India and Russia, it's always about defense and simply because of the kind of volume of you know, defense purchases that India makes from India, uh, that India makes from uh, Russia, beg, beg your pardon. But uh, what about the other issues on the table? 
Well, you know, there is there is there is the gasification of India. India took its uh, first consignment of liquid natu liquefied natural gas from Russia in June this year, and that's said to be a major agenda uh, between the two countries. And of course, there is trade as well. Well, more than taking gas from them, we have investments of several billion dollars in the uh, in Russia on gas exp and oil, uh, gas exploration. So um, yes, we sell it to what the produce to third countries. But it's a pretty lucrative relationship for us. The Russians have built up an e on the energy sector, I think with about six or seven billion dollars of investment on a, with SR in India. So, and finally, we are into purchase of uh, gas and oil. Interestingly, we are also purchasing shale gas and oil from the United States. So, um, uh, we, we have the uh, and lastly, space. Space, they have always stood by us, even during sanctions after our nuclear tests. The Russians never gave up. They continued to provide us what we wanted. From sending the first Indian man into space, mm. Russia has been India's space partner. Abs ab absolutely. I mean, what we've got from the Americans and from NASA, NASA is very little. And uh, in space, they remain a partner. In energy, they remain a partner, and as I said, their their uh, nuclear power plants now are increasingly have a made in India portion in it. And as we speak, Mr. Patsardi, we're running these uh, information graphics on the S-400 air defense missile system. Seventy-two simultaneous guided missiles can be fired from the S-400. It's just a superior air defense system, and India has made clear that we want the best in the market. And it doesn't have to be from the United States of America. Uh, the good old Russia, which has been supplying uh, arms to India for over the many decades since uh, India's independence, uh, is, is the one which has the best product in the market. That's the S-400 Triumph Air Defense uh, Missile System. And uh, we have Fred Weir, Russian affairs expert from Moscow, also joining us. Uh, so uh, I'm going to ask him this as well. Fred, uh, we've been discussing defense, defense, and more defense. That's simply about the amount of uh, you know, arms deals that India and Russia do. But there are other things on the agenda that is worth billions and billions of dollars, be it uh, uh, you know, the purchase and sale of uh, gas and oil, uh, or for that matter, trade uh, that for now is not performing up to its potential. Right. We will uh, reconnect with uh, uh, Fred uh, Ware in just a bit, uh, but we are continuing to get you the latest details of uh, Russian President Vladimir Putin's uh, India visit. Uh, those are visuals from just a short while ago, India's External Affairs Minister, Sushma Swaraj, uh, uh, giving him a warm official welcome, a red carpet being rolled out for him on the tarmac at the Palam Airport in New Delhi, where he landed uh, just about uh, 20 minutes ago. Uh, and uh, much is on the agenda in that meeting between Russian President Vladimir Putin and India's uh, Prime Minister Narendra Modi. He will be meeting Prime Minister Narendra Modi for the first time in this visit uh, in about uh, a few minutes from now, five to ten minutes from now. He is on his way, in fact, to meet uh, India's Prime Minister Narendra Modi at uh, Lok Kalyan Marg uh, in uh, New Delhi. And uh, they will meet again tomorrow morning at 11 a.m. Uh, Mr. Pathasardi, so when there is this short kind of a meeting, the moment he lands, this is more of a courtesy, hi, hello, welcome to the Prime Minister, whereas the, they will get down no, to business I, tomorrow I morning. Think, no, I think when heads of government, especially with the Russians and the Americans and major powers, there's always a one-on-one -on -one, uh, with nobody else present. If you go back to Mr. Modi's visit to Wuhan, he had eight hours one-on-one -on -one with uh, Xi Jinping. Uh, hopefully, that has, is leading to uh, no more doklums. <laughs> so, um, one, and with, with the Russians, as far as I know, from my days in Moscow in the 60s and 70s, every Indian head of government and his Russian counterpart have a one-on-one, -on -one, which is... At this moment, uh, it's a good time to remind everybody that uh, you're one of the last ones who was involved in, uh, you know, defense uh, deals between India and, and the, the Soviet Union uh, and, or uh, slash Russia. Uh, the last ones uh, to still be alive, uh, isn't well, that? Well, um, amongst the last ones alive in the Indo-Soviet Treaty of 1971, yes. 
but um, the fact of the fact of the fact of the matter is um, it is not in india's interest to be too uh, dependent on any one country and equally it is not in our interest to play off one against the other pakistan does that and invariably lands in trouble hmm. um, the chinese relationship with russia is a marriage of convenience i mean i have in the years i've lived with and dealt with the russians they don't like the chinese <laughs> so it and it's historic it goes back to the uh, 18th century almost right and of course the mongol invasions of russia so it's it's very deep rooted whereas in the case of the indians you know it's it's not that sort of a relationship but as i said right now we also have our differences uh, as i said there rather cozy relationship with the taliban is worrying mm. because we believe that external powers should not get involved in the internal politics of afghanistan it's for the afghans to resolve their problems absolutely on that note, I'm going to thank uh, Mr. Pat Sarthi for uh, joining us here on World is One News. Uh, as uh, Russia's President Vladimir Putin uh, landed in India, our coverage will continue on the other side. Time now.